Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Mm. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and to all a good night. To all a good night. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today, in honor of Christmas, we're talking about some of the most interesting holidays around the world. We're going international, Rachel. I mean, this is like Mardi Gras on steroids. Like, we are going big. Have you been? All around. No. You have never been to New Orleans. It's time. I know. I've never been. Well, and if I'm, I lived in Mobile, and Mobile's claim to fame is that Mardi Gras started That's there. That's right. I did. I have heard that. I have heard that. So, yeah, we are going to talk about all the different holidays and celebrations and festivities around the world. So, join us. Jump jump on the old plane. Wow. We're going to go around the globe this Christmas celebrating people everywhere. <laughs> Wow, I don't know what that was, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> really enjoyed what that. that. Did that feel like inspirational? I wouldn't call it inspirational. I would call it strange, <laughs> but also entertaining. It was Hop nice. On the plane. Yeah, not all of these are a party, Rachel. Some include forced silence. Some oh, include okay, vegetarianism. Okay. So it's not all fun and games around here. Merry Christmas. But hey, at the end, we're going to share some of the most interesting ways people celebrate Christmas around the world. And uh, we're going to include money in this because we do have the word money in our podcast title. I liked my intro better, but it's fine, George. So what are we sipping on? It's a Christmas mocktail, Rachel. And it is delicious. Can I say that? In the spirit of non-alcohol, we have a mocktail because people uh, have been really enjoying the mocktail recipes. They've actually been, I will say, they rival the cocktails. Yes. Like, the I team like has we've been doing a great a, job. I feel like we've had some great mocktails. So uh, we have a, it's just a Christmas mocktail. It's a very cranberry gingery drink. It doesn't have any other name. Just Christmas yep. mocktail. On the internet, it's called a Christmas mocktail. Mm. Lindsay is giving me a little bit of lip. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, Google Christmas mocktail. And apparently this is the one drink that comes up. I don't yeah. know. So when you get to your destination, because people, you guys could be listening to this or watching this, you know, on the road to family. Guten Tag. Drive <laughs> I don't Driving know. down the road. So, hey, stick around till the end of the episode. We're going to give you our rating, reveal the cost per glass, and the recipe. So some of you are in the car driving down the road. Inspire us, Rachel, with more. I tried, and then you cut me off again. Are you feisty? <laughs> I forgot to get to the— Merry Christmas, Grinch. What is happening? <laughs> I'm more of a Scrooge than a Grinch. I think we can all agree on that. Scrooge, yeah, that is yours. And yeah. who are you? What's your Christmas character? Oh, hmm. I feel like I'm an elf. You are. <laughs> you are. I was going to say that Yeah, I too. can see that. What am I? I'm not Mrs. Claus. I'm not Rudolph. Elf. Elf-like. George, what do you love about the holidays? Why do we, lo- why do we, why do you think the humanity loves to celebrate the holidays? Well, I think, number one, time off work, if we're going to be honest. Sure. You get a it's break. It's a break. It's just Absolutely. a break from the chaos Absolutely. into a different kind of chaos with family. Yep. But it's a chaos that's somehow familiar and endearing yep. in its own strange way. Yeah. And I think there's like a consistency that it's predictable. There's something about eating turkey on Thanksgiving, opening gifts on Christmas morning. Like there's things about the holidays, you know, fire in the fireplace, stockings hung. Getting into a fight with your siblings. Done. Dysfunctional families getting together <laughs> all of it. That's it true. Is, but there is something about the consistency and, and tradition. The yeah. Like, I, we did this when we were kids and we yeah, still do it today. Nostalgic and all of it. So, yeah, we there's kind of something need about that, it we love. that. It's almost a safety thing. Like, yes. We love to have that safety in our life. Yeah. And because it's an important part of us as humanity, again, we're going to go around and talk about different holidays. So, the first one is from, is in Rio. In Brazil, Ooh, Rio George, de Janeiro. It's talk to us about the old Brazilian carnival. Carnival, if you will. Oh, so sorry. Touche. So sorry. Which I'm, is not I'm gonna, Brazilian. I'm going to mispronounce everything, you guys. So just. Yeah, can we I caveat? I don't do phonics. I think we need a caveat here, a disclaimer, Rachel, that we are going to offend all people groups in this episode. <laughs> we don't want to. We, we will mispronounce you. a lot of things. We will really laugh sorry. at things that we think are funny that you may say, don't laugh at that. That's someone's culture. Mm-hmm. We're not meaning to offend. We're just having a good time uh-huh. and we're, we're learning together. That's right. Carnival takes place in February and March in Brazil, and it's an all-out party during the week leading up to Lent. So that's a lot. there's a lot of carnival-ish celebrations in the world, like Mardi yep. Gras, like you mentioned. But Brazilian carnival is the biggest. Two million people a day flooding the streets. 
That's frightening. That's a lot. Yeah. So I they, feel like I'd get run over, Rachel. That's, I, I mean, don't want to be in that yeah. crowd. It's so fun, though. So why do they celebrate Yeah, this? so they do this to take a break from normal social roles and behaviors. So again, it's kind of that, like, what happens at Carnival stays at wow. Carnival, Just if you will. Just pure debauchery? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, here. what it really means is farewell to the flesh. Oh. The name Carnival is allegedly inspired by the Latin phrase carne. Vol. Carne with meat? Yeah, take away the flesh or take away the meat. So since Lent is a time of fasting until Easter, you know, kind of kind of tracks. That makes So it's kind of like, so, let's go hard before we have to give this yep, up. Yep, so lots of food, lots of alcohol, extravagant costumes. I mean, all of it. The city's top Samba schools competing at the Samba Drome. Oh, now that's, that's fun with over 70,000 spectators. That's so here's wild. what's crazy is it can cost up to $2 million dollars. And some of the costumes are up to a thousand dollars each. It's a lot. That's a lot of money. Do yeah. you have any thousand dollar costumes at home? <laughs> no. What's the not. most amount you've ever spent on a costume? On a costume? Oh gosh! You know what? I did Mary Poppins one year. It feels Actually, I bet I, could, I bet I could find a picture and we could throw it up. On did you head. nail it? Yes. And Winston was Bert. Oh, nice. And it was fantastic. But I did one of those DIY ones. So I ended up buying a bunch and of stuff. More. And I think it costs more after I did it all. It probably looked better than like the one you get at Party it looked, City. Or I looked fantastic. I was Mary for sure. So I okay. would, uh, yeah. But it was not a thousand dollars, George. Okay. It was not. And it, the whole production didn't cost two million to put this on, I imagine. No, it did not. It That's did a lot not. of money. Yeah. To spend. What about you? Are you a are you a costume guy? I am weirdly, you know what? This may make me the Grinch. I don't like being in any kind of costume. Yeah. I'm a little bit. I'm kind of grumpy about it. Every time I'm like, ah, it's a costume party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't but know. But then why. once you do it, it's fun. Sometimes. Okay. But I'm like very <laughs> excited to go home and like get this costume mm, mm-hmm. off and be in. PJs again, okay, especially you, one involving like makeup. So, like, so I'm going to say uh, old Carnival in yeah. Rio, probably in, in no. your gym. I have been in a parade. Okay, <laughs> but it was like the Flag Day parade in it's my like hometown of Dedham, July Massachusetts. Parade. Yeah. Okay. Next up uh, is a holiday that takes place in March in Bali. Naipi in Bali, Indonesia, takes place in March, and it marks their religious New Year. Here's yes. what's interesting: instead of the debauchery, it's a day of silence. Reserved for self-reflection, fasting, and meditation. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. To detox and cleanse from the previous year. So there's no traveling, transport, work, sound, or light allowed on the island for 24 hours. That's so incredible. Like Sabbath vibes, you know? You're just oh, like, yeah. chill. TVs and Actually, radios are turned off. Airports closed. The state-owned internet is shut down. Everyone must stay home. That's I think that's scary. healthy. I think it's really good. Wow. I think we need one of those in America, and I think we wouldn't know what to do with ourselves. Well, it says even tourists are required to stay in their hotel rooms. <gasps> Ooh, make sure. When is it? Make sure if you're going to Bali. Make if you, sure unless you just want to hang March. in a hotel room in silence with, like, no light or sound. Make sure in March that it's not that. Yeah, so— uh, I'd be down for that, though. But I think a day of a day of silence, like a silent retreat, people do those. Yeah. Um, would you ever, does that sound like appealing to you? I would love that. You would. <laughs> I don't know if that's in the cards for me with a newborn. No, 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 or no dogs, not for a while. But here's a money related thought for you, Rachel. Yeah. Uh, what if uh, there was a day of no spending or oh. a month of no spending even? Yes. We talk about doing a no spend month for your budget. Uh, cause here's what's crazy about this holiday. You can't even get money. The oh. bank puts out a PSA every year reminding people, even tourists, uh, ATMs on the island will be shut down. Banks are closed. Everything's closed. So this is kind of a nice financial cleanse, too, for people. For sure. Because you can't go anywhere. No travel. What I like about that kind of, those kind of challenges is it does force you to realize, oh my gosh, I can live with less than what I'm doing, right? Like the consumption has to stop and it can stop and we're going to be okay. It's almost like living in that for a bit because we live in such consumption it is. It's a reset. Well, we need this like constant stimulation. Yes. Not just yes. with spending, but lights and sound and screens and you're just looking constant. at your phone for the 17th time I know. in the last hour. I know. So I think it's a beautiful thing we should all practice. And especially the no spend month. If you've never tried it, try doing a no spend month where in 2024 where yes. you spend on nothing except the necessities. Cities. Food, see how much utilities, you spend. shelter, it, transportation. See how much you save. I know. It's a lot. It's great. All right, next one, George is in Hong Kong, Ooh. and it takes place in April slash May. This is the Chung Chow Bun Festival. Okay. What a fun name. Yeah. Folklore says this festival started as a way to celebrate the end of a plague. Ooh. That's, hey, you know, end of a plague is if there's ever been a reason to celebrate. So we're going to 
celebrate yeah, like, that. No more scurvy, guys. Let's have a we party. All right. <laughs> Steamed bun offerings were allegedly made as a way to end the plague. Thus, buns became the heart of the celebration and a symbol of luck. Oh, and I love this. They're very specific. This is what I appreciate about this kind of tradition because it's very specific. Steamed rice flour buns contain sweet fillings that are stamped in red with Chinese characters, ping on, which is safety in English. Oh, that's nice. So safety that. from the plague, like for yeah. your health. Yeah. That's nice. So Very it's, specific. The reason they celebrate is to remember the end of widespread illness on the island and to pray for continued protection and prosperity. Yeah. So what happens is part of the religious fast is that the entire island goes vegetarian. Even local McDonald's, ready for this, takes meat off the menu. And There's serves meat in McDonald's? Mushroom burgers. burgers. Oh, my gosh. That's a shock. You don't know where my children are right now with my they husband eating dinner. They offer mushroom burgers at McDonald's during this time? I know, yes. And there's a parade throughout the town that features local children dressed as historical characters. And they even put on stilts to hide their costumes. They look high up in the air. I mean, it's wow, a whole that's thing. Fun. It's so fantastic. The best part, here it is. There's a bun scrambling competition at midnight on the last day of the festival. Competitors scale a bamboo tower covered <gasps> with 9,000 imitation buns and try to collect as many buns as possible in three minutes. So fun. I love it. Okay, what's your favorite like holiday food, George? If theirs would be buns for this festival, what's yours? Oh, man. I'm going to go with my... Heritage and mm. culture, which is Middle Eastern. Yes. And it is grape leaves. <gasps> yes. So is that a holiday thing? It is for us. I don't know okay. why. But okay. it's you know, it goes along. We we've got some ham and turkey and whatnot. Yes. But grape leaves are a staple. It's my favorite. So my mom for her home for the holidays, she's always making a big old uh, pile of grape leaves for us. I love it. That's so great. How about you guys? Um Gosh, I don't you know what I've tried that I feel like you guys do? And you correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. But Dave Ramsey makes an incredible beef tenderloin. Oh, he does. Yes. Is that part it of is Christmas? True. Yeah, well, usually we'll do a meat on Christmas. So, yes, with the with the Ramseys, that would be it. Yeah. On the smoker? Yeah, he'll it's do that. It's unbelievable. Egg, he does do a great beef He crushes it. That, it I feel is like delicious. is his specialty. Um, I feel like I do a lot of like, uh, I see it's not holiday-esque, but it just reminds me of like Christmas. Like, like breakfast casseroles. Like we have a lot oh. of that kind of stuff that's just like you're reheating and you're doing this and that and it's you're kind of like living in that mode. Do that's the kids now to. look forward to a yep. certain type of food? Charles asked for the breakfast casserole this morning from Thanksgiving. That's so Aww. precious. He asked for a casserole. Did you deliver like, so it to sweet. him in his queen size bed? <laughs> in his queen size bed. No, I'd thrown it out. I'd thrown it out. Oh, um, sweet Charles. That's really cute, though, that they're yeah. already starting to understand yes, tradition. Yes, I know. I know. So, yeah, it's it's that kind of, like, warmth food that's, like, good to me. I love it. Beautiful. I think it's so fun. So, so fun. Okay, before we go to the next um, celebration, George, around the world, let's talk about one of the games that I think is so fun, especially during the holidays, to play with friends and family, and that is Telestrations. Another great tradition. Seriously, Make it create a part of your holidays. It. Yes, you guys, this is a really fun game. I mean, it is, and it's hysterical. And I like it because you can kind of be social and talk. I mean, it's kind of competitive, but it's not like It's not like crazy. Monopoly where you're waiting on like seven people to take a turn. Yeah. It's a very active game. Yes, it's active, but it's not like, oh, I have to think on my feet real fast. Like you can kind of like enjoy the game too. So yes. the speed it of it is moving. good. Yeah, it's the speed the of it pace. is good. It's great. Lots of laughter. So think of Pictionary and old school telephone together. And that's Telestrations. So make sure to pick it up at Walmart and enjoy this holiday season. So make fun. it a tradition. It's so fun. Making the memes, as they say. <laughs> that's right. All right. Next, George, is uh, the New Yam Festival. A classic in Western Africa <laughs> slash southeastern Nigeria. That's right. This takes place in August and September. That's when they have New Yams, apparently. And it's celebrated by West African ethnic groups like the Igbo. And the festival marks the end of a rainy season and the beginning of the harvest season for yams. So I was correct, Rachel. Uh, this is when the new yam show. Old yams, get out. New <laughs> yams are in. But it's a staple crop in the region. I did not know that. And the yes. first harvested yams of the season, a.k.a. the new yams, hold significance. I love it. Yeah, they do this for gratitude for the fruitful harvest. It bonds the community. People come together. They just celebrate a job well done. So... Um, yeah, parading and displaying yams in prominent places within yes. the community, a grand feast with a lot of yam-based dishes, and traditional attire and performances. I love that. Wow. I, I want to see just like yams in different parts of the community, just displayed beautifully. I know. I what a great. sight to behold. What a sight Have, to are behold. Are you a yams person? 
Um, is that a southern thing? I don't know that I had a lot of yams growing up. It's kind of like a sweet potato. So, like, I would say, yeah, it's like a, a yes, casserole and all that. I don't even think I saw what it, if I, anything of the sort until if, I moved to the south. What if I added a sweet potato casserole, sweet yam casserole to this festivity? You think they would appreciate it? I think they would enjoy With it. Some brown sugar and pecans on top. They'd probably think it was strange. They'd be like, why did they add marshmallows to what? this? <laughs> Do this vegetable. <laughs> That's strange. Americans are very strange. They're very those Southerns. Those but here's are. here's a money related thought for you, Rachel, mm-hmm. to tie it back. Festivals equal economic growth. So in this case, it's a platform for farmers to showcase their produce and promote local trade. So think about like a farmers market here in town. Yes, it's a great way for farmers to create some revenue, get the word out about what they're doing. Yeah, I love so it. these celebrations encourage spending and tourism, which then creates jobs and stimulates the economy. All of it, yeah. We got one more, Rachel. Okay, next up is Saint Lucy's Day. Oh, I love we that. love a saint. Primarily in Scandinavia and Italy, it takes place on December thirteenth. Saint Lucy's Day is a Christian feast day in honor of. Lucia of Syracuse, who huh. was martyred in 304 AD. So the legend is, is that, that she uh, brought food and aid to Christians who were forced into hiding in Rome. Wow, in the catacombs. Ooh, that's dark. She wore a candlelit wreath on her head to light her way because it left her hands free to carry as much food as possible. Now that's resourceful. <laughs> I got to say, that's innovation. At its Saint finest. Lucy, that would be a woman. Yes. She'd find a way. You know to what? Do it. I can get, use both hands. I'll put the wreath over my neck. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. That's why Follow women me. rule the world. Follow me. Here's why they celebrate. To honor the legacy and faith of St. Lucy, mm. to bring light to the darkest day of the year, the winter solstice. Um, and what this looks like, Rachel, families observe this day by having one of their daughters, traditionally the eldest, dress in white and serve coffee and baked goods. That's really nice. I think so, yeah. Feels a little off of the that original would be mission. Denise, and I'd say, <laughs> give me baked goods, Denise. But she was there to carry food to the to the Christians hiding. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yes, I totally. So I totally in Italy, Saint Lucy brings gifts to good children and coal to the bad ones. Oh, kind so of, kind like of a Santa, Santa vibe. Yeah. Interesting. S- Santa Claus. Hmm. There we go. That's that's really nice. Love Would it. you ever try that? Uh, Would you have Amelia dress in white <laughs> and bring you coffee and baked goods? I think that's a great tradition. My kids do bring me coffee. They will make a Keurig. They know how to do the Keurig. A Keurig. Keurig. <laughs> What are we teaching these it kids, Rachel? It is possible. It is possible. Oh, George. I love all that, though. I think I think traditions holidays and fun. holidays are so fun. Okay, so the fact that we're near Christmas, let's just do a couple of rapid-fire Christmas traditions, specifically Christmases, uh, Christmas traditions around the world, okay? Okay. In Iceland, books are exchanged as Christmas gifts, which is great. They spend the night reading the books in bed and eating chocolates. It's called... Yola Boca Flod. Yola Boca Flood. Yola Boca Flood. The Christmas Book Flood is what it stands oh, for. Oh, that's fun. You can see Flood, Flood, and yeah. Book, Book. It's all there together. Are you trying to do— I feel like I'm a literary genius Teaching me, Teaching me these things. That's okay, fun. Ready for this one? In Wales, they do caroling with a real horse skull. George, okay. you love horses. Got dark real quick. <laughs> Part of this— I uh, never said murder the horse. I said <laughs> sell it, Rachel. Yes. A part of this gray mare tradition is to sing carols and then challenge the people you're singing to to a rhyming insult Stop battle it. in Welsh. It's just like uh, Pitch Perfect. I was going to go That's eight mile. I love singing. that I went eight mile with Eminem and Rachel's like, Pitch Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Our difference. That's awesome. Okay. In uh, Australia, the winter holiday is so warm that they celebrate... On the beach with picnics and swimming and volleyball and, of course, some surfing Santas. Now Surfers that's dressed fun. up. That is so fun. Mm-hmm. Well, I would love a warm winter holiday. Are you yeah. a fan of a cold holiday? I guess you would love, like, it's snowing on Christmas. Oh, yeah, sure, wait, Christmas. Yeah, I do like a, yeah, and then I'm like, and then take me warm. Right after. Right after. 26, okay. get me out of there. Oh, on the 26th of December. Uh, yeah, yeah, Got exactly. It. exactly. Wow. Yeah. All right. That's a fun one. In Venezuela, it's tradition to roller skate to early morning mass on Christmas <laughs> Day. In fact, vehicles are banned <gasps> from many parts of the city until 8 a.m. Now, that's fun. There you go. Okay, the next one might be, this might be the, the last and best. Eating KFC on Christmas Eve in Japan, an estimated 3.5 million Japanese families eat fried chicken every year for this holiday. Did KFC and were they like, hey guys, new tradition we're all, all doing day? Because oh, KFC I love it. could not make that happen in America. No, only in Japan. 
we that's a good that's a fun bucket list thing to go to Literally, Japan on Christmas Eve. And, bucket list. What KFC bucket? <laughs> <laughs> I was. I thought, wow, you Rachel's really on it today. You old man. Little did I know. Unbelievable. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. So, um, yeah, I think it's great. And you know what? I think holidays are great for the community, boosting the economy overall. But always remember, you guys, regardless of the holiday, there's joy. There's festivities. But just be wise. We always like to say, don't let the January you hate the December Ooh. you. But we are late in December as you are listening or watching this. So it might be a little too late for you. But that's okay. There's always there's still time. There's always time. Yeah. But it's yeah, there is a piece of the holidays that makes us a little lackadaisical. Yes. You know, we get mm-hmm. a little lazy with our spending and go, eh, yeah. we'll figure it out next month. It's the holiday. You know, it's kind of like I it's know. the holidays. It's a justification. Uh, totally. We totally. can overspend. We can buy ourselves a little something while we're buying other people's stuff. And did you do we that love this the Christmas? generosity. I did. I did too. What'd you buy? What did I buy? Oh, my gosh. Okay, can I tell you something I bought Mm -hmm. that was really just for me? Mm -hmm. I bought, like, really nice guest towels. (laughs) (laughs) Woohoo! Party! (laughs) Party man here! It's been a dream of mine, Rachel. I can see you at the old carnival having lots of fun. You're a fun one. guest towels. You're a fun one, George. You know what? This is why I don't share things, Rachel. (laughs) I try to be vulnerable. Guest towels? Come on. I'm actually talking like a new pair of shoes or something that you got. Shoes are shoes. Guest towels are... Wow. Okay. You're what? not even using guest towels. What yeah, the... that's how generous I am, What's... guys. <laughs> like, What's your brand? So Give us the brands. What is it? Matuk. Like... Okay. They're where the you... Matuk Milagro towels. Where do you buy them? Um, where did I buy them? Nordstrom, maybe? Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to department store. Yeah. <gasps> These Fancy are schmancy. these are luxurious. Where did you find that? Or like, how did you hear about them? Um, I tried them at a relative's house, and I was like, "What is this brand? This feels luxurious." Oh wow! Did you get you and Whitney some? No, we mm-hmm. don't deserve it. It's for the guests. I want the no, guests. That's bizarre. That is a little bizarre. I want the guests to feel like they're living in luxury when they're at our house. How many times do you have guests, George? Lately, a lot with a new baby. Okay, you know, that's fair. a lot of family coming through. That's fair. I appreciate a great guest room. I I like setting something up that's nice. Someone walks in, like, oh wow, this these are nice towels. All of it, but I would have gotten another set for me. You're right. Maybe we'll work on that. We How should. about you? What's the big Christmas splurge for yourself this year? Uh, it wasn't a splurge, but I yeah got some got some clothes. You know. Okay, upgrade the wardrobe. You'd see the old Abercrombie sale. You think sure, throw in a few sweaters. You know, old J. Crew. Sweaters. Got some sales. We'll get some new oh, earrings. Oh, showing off the new earrings. I did. Those are they're, nice. They're festive, aren't they? They actually match our drink per. <gasps> Can you hold it up against oh the gosh. earrings? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Those are from J. Crew. Look into this camera right here. Right, we'll go. We'll, we'll do go. a zoom in. Yeah. Is that good? Wait. And your shirt. But, anyways, yeah, so I did. The key is I'm guilty. it's in the budget. We got a Christmas budget. Yes, for sure. And, and mine uh, came out of a clothing line item. I didn't even take That's it out fair. of the Christmas budget. Do you guys have your a line item for each person you're going to get gifts for and do it that way? Um, What's your style? In every dollar, we do just have Christmas gifts, but I keep a tally on my notes. That's what I yeah. do, too. Yeah. <gasps> George. same z so Jinx, you owe I'm me a really... Christmas mocktail. <laughs> you owe me a Christmas mocktail. Oh, so good. All right, George. It's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with... Guilty Guilty as as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip. Lindsay? Have you ever re-gifted a gift someone got for you to someone else on Christmas? Re-gifted the same gift I got that day to someone else? No. Like you got a gift sometime Mm. this year and you re-gifted it to someone else specifically on Christmas. No. I have re-gifted a gift, and I was caught. <laughs> yes, you told, oh yeah, you told us. I had that, that one. one, and then I did. Oh man, last Christmas we draw you names. Did. We draw names like for the Ramsey kids. I got Denise. Oh no. Um, and I kind of had to throw it together last minute because I didn't prep well. So I did open up the bottom of my sink, and I had had. Like, I was on a makeup subscription, like, foundation subscription, and I got, like, too many before I canceled it. Threw one of those in there. Just made <laughs> a little, like, like self-care kit I out did. of nothing. Does she know this, or is this the nope. first time? Sorry, Denise. <laughs> and know. sweet Denise was probably like, Rachel, this is so thoughtful. Oh, my gosh. I know. I did do that. It's not really re-gifting. But Does she is- know? She doesn't know. If she listens to the show, I don't think she listens to Smart Money Happy she Hour, doesn't. though. She has better things to do. Yeah. <laughs> 
She's a busy. So mom. I did do that. I threw together a gift. No, that's okay. That's not regifting though. What about you, Georgie? I plan on it this year. <gasps> yeah. Are you? Can you yeah. tell us? Say what we it is? tell us. Yeah. Well, it's more for like white elephant. There's not like a specific person like, oh, I'm going to give them this. But there's things like I got a little, uh, little like fancy salt container as oh, yeah. a gift, like the pinch thing. Yeah, a little <gasps> pinch salt thing. Ooh, give it to me. I'll a take board. it. It's very, it's really <laughs> cute. But I'm like, I don't know what we already have one. I don't know what to do with this. So okay. I'm going to regift it to Rachel this Christmas. <laughs> Act surprise. I get like a sprinkle salt. But container. I think it's great to regift things at like a white elephant where you just need to bring it. You know, dirty Santa, oh. whatever you guys call them. I don't want to offend anyone. People get offended. What do you call it? White elephant? Uh, favorite things party. <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's different. That's different. Is white elephant what you don't like? Yeah. No, not necessarily. They're well, kind of gag gifts a little yeah, bit. Or dirt, yes. Yeah. Something I always forget, from around your house. Because Dirty Santa is like you steal gifts. That's the There's same. one that's like a gag gift one. I thought that was white elephant. I thought they were like one and the same. I think we'll let the comments tell us. Yeah, They're going to have yeah, strong opinions about this. Let but that's know. where I think the best time to re-gift is, is when it's not going to a specific person. Okay. Yeah. But my the people on my list, they want very, it's become kind of like, you lose the spirit. When they're like, yes. I want these Hoka sneakers. Yeah, so we decided you know? not to do like, that this right. year. We're, you don't get to just, you don't get to tell the person what you want. They have to like genuinely buy you a gift. Oh, wow. Oh, that's yeah. fun. I that like that fun. I With a certain budget, do you say yeah, yeah, 50 yeah, bucks a budget. Max? We set a budget. Mm-hmm. Or around 50 bucks per item, whatever yep, it is. Exactly. Yeah. I like that idea. Yep. But it's also it more stressful because you're like, crap. I well, because like you like send someone the link. That's what we used to do. And you just buy it. And then know? I'm like, well, they could have just bought it at I this know. point. So just kind of Venmo like, me the expense. You, you wrap here. it. You open that. it. Yeah. Call it a day. I know. Totally. There it so is. So great. All right, George. Yeah, guilty for sure. Uh, drinks. What are we thinking? Who's who's almost done? I'm closer. Yeah, you are closer. It was really good. This was a Christmas mocktail. And I will say nothing else about it. Because that's all it is, and I'm going to give this drink a 9 out of 10. I was saying the same thing. I thought 9 out of 10. There's not much else I would do to improve it. And I'm not usually a ginger beer fan, but it works really well with it's this. Because what's in nice. it? It's what? Ginger beer? You're close. Cranberry okay. juice. Okay. Apple cider. Okay. Orange juice and ginger beer. Okay. So simple ingredients that yeah. you can get at the store. And it comes out to $1.60 per glass. That's awesome. This is a great one to put in a giant container for yes. the holidays with cranberries on top. So beautiful. And get a little, uh, what are they called? Uh, a, a ladle. A ladle. ladle. Ladle the drinks into a cute glass and call it a day. Call it a day, folks. So make this on Christmas Eve for your family. The recipe's in the show notes. It's a real Christmas treat. It is a Christmas treat. That's right, George. All right. It's almost closing time, you guys. So always leave a review do it share the episodes with friends and family this christmas you guys and genuinely from the bottom of our hearts we hope you have a very merry christmas my heart has grown has it many many times it has i'm so glad rachel put me in the holiday spirit she's that powerful i do hope you guys have a great christmas friends and family so fun you guys enjoy and we'll see you next thursday on an all-new episode of smart Smart money Money happy Happy Hour. hour